Well, blessings, everybody. Uh, we've reached lesson three, video number four of the good, bad, and the ugly. The last video of this lesson three here. Uh, make sure you read Second Chronicles chapter thirty-five and this small portion out of Second Kings. We have here a, a portion of scripture that's very, very exciting and very tragic at the same time. We have a Passover which is a thrilling thing, and we have a passing through, which winds up being tragic. And so take a moment to read it, and then come back. Well, in 2 Chronicles 35, we're seeing some things right here. Remember, Chronicles was written to the exiles who were returning from Babylon, and the things that are included in there are to really encourage them as to how they're supposed to live and what they're supposed to remember now that they're back in the land. They've been through a very difficult time in the 70 years that they were in Babylon. And so Josiah, when he heard the truth of what the Word of, the God, word of God said, he decided we need to celebrate the Passover. They had not done it. It was that time of year. And so they celebrated the Passover. In the last two or three weeks of examining the scripture, we see all that that entailed. And this is the first time they celebrated since Samuel's time. They were supposed to celebrate it every year. This really gives us some insight into the uh, political leadership of the kings, the spiritual leadership of the priests. They had not been adhering to the Word of God. We saw a couple of videos back that they had actually found the Word of God in the temple. But we see that they had not been honoring it in any way for many generations. So Josiah encouraged the priests and Levites in their service to the house of the Lord. And he told them to put the ark back in the house of the Lord. Apparently the ark had been removed. Uh, this might have happened when Manasseh took it out to make room for his altars. We don't know. So the Levites prepared a Passover. Josiah made a very, very large contribution, as detailed in the scripture there. The officers and officials also contributed, uh, probably due to Josiah's example. You know, I don't know how many times, I'll give you an example, <laughs> that I've been in situations, uh, particularly with leading in worship, and uh, the pastor will say something about, uh, well, you know, the people weren't worshiping very well today, or this happened, this happened. Well, the reason is the pastor is sitting down there flipping through the Bible, flipping through his notes, waiting for all the preliminaries to get out of the way where he can get up and speak. You know, it's, uh, people watch the leadership, and they watch what Josiah was doing. Everyone ate the Passover as, as written in the book of Moses. The Levites even prepared for the gatekeepers who couldn't leave their post. Everybody celebrated, and it was a wondrous time. Now, it's 13 years later, 609 B.C., and Pharaoh Necho of Egypt was on his way up to Carchemish to support the Assyrians against Babylon. He was going up the coastal highway. It did pass through the land of Israel, but he wasn't bothering with Israel. He was trying to get somewhere. Well, Josiah went out to stop him, and apparently the Lord had not told him to do this. We know because of what happens in the account. He just determined that he was king and nobody was going to pass through the land. Well, Necho sends messengers out to Josiah, and he tells him, don't come against me. Okay, you better not come against me. And then Necho just tells him point blank, God has ordered me to hurry. And he's speaking about God, the Most High God. He said that God has told me this. And then Necho told Josiah not to interfere with what God had told him to do. And he says, if you do, then God's going to destroy whoever will interfere. Josiah did not listen. He literally turns around, disguises himself, goes out and attacks, goes into battle, and doesn't use a king's chariot, uses like a warrior's chariot or something, winds up getting struck by an arrow, turns around and says, hey, you better put me in the king chariot, I'm hurt, let's get back. They do, and he winds up dying. Now, folks, there's some really, really serious principles right here for us to consider just for a moment. So take these things before the Lord. Josiah was a king unlike any other before, a marvelous king, unlike anybody before him or after, and yet, this cost him his life because he did not seek the counsel of the Lord. And when the Lord spoke to him, he did not listen. And you say, well, the Lord was speaking through the through a pagan king. Does God do this? Yeah, he spoke through Balaam's ass. Remember that? And so the Lord can speak in any way he wants to. We need to be discerning and we need to listen to the voice of the Lord. Now, Josiah, this does not mean that he wasn't righteous and he wasn't saved and he won't be in heaven. The various questions that people will ask. But I tell you what, he did not do what the Lord told him to do, and it cost him his corporeal existence here on the earth. We would do well to seek the Lord in everything. Again, I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman, Alabama, and I'll see you again next time.